today, we are going to review equations having to do with mechanical energy and equations having to do with momentum and impact force and uh, impulse. Sorry, say again? Oh, OK, thank you. OK, the reason we are going to review all this stuff is because now that we have equations for mechanical energy and we have equations for momentum and impact force, I find that students have a tendency to kind of mishmash them together and not fully understand when to use which ones. So we're going to write down all of these equations and we're going to talk about when we use them. We'll start with conservation of mechanical energy. Mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. When can we use this equation? Mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. Come on. Okay. It is correct that we can use this equation when there is no friction. However, that is not a complete picture. There are also times when there is friction that we can use this equation. So it's important to understand that as well. Mohan. When there's no work done by friction? When there's no work done by friction. So when the work done by friction is equal to zero and one other thing. All right. When the work done by the force applied is also equal to zero. When the work done by the force applied is also equal to zero. Conservation of mechanical energy. The work due to friction needs to be equal to zero, and the work done by the force applied needs to be equal to zero. Next, we have the equation work due to friction equals change in mechanical energy. Again, a box around that guy. When can we use this equation? The work due to friction equals change in mechanical energy. Mary? Is it with constant velocity? It does not have to, it doesn't have to do with whether it's velocity is constant or not. So okay. no, it does not have to do with that. That's okay. When can we use this equation? Work due to friction equals change in mechanical energy. Well, when the work of the force applied is zero? When the work done by the force applied is equal to zero. What about the work done by friction? Does that have to be equal to zero, class? No. Yeah. No. So the difference between these two is the work done by friction does not have to be equal to zero. However, the work done by the force applied still needs to be equal to zero. Whenever we use either one of these two equations, what must we do first? Joe. Identify an initial and a final point in the zero line. You must identify initial and final points. And the zero line. Great. That is mechanical energy. We're now talking about momentum, conservation of momentum. The sum of the initial momentums, which is a vector, is equal to the sum of the final momentums, which is a vector. When can we use this equation? Conservation of momentum. Maddie. This is during an explosion or a collision? During all collisions and explosions. Okay. We also have another equation that has to do with momentum, and that is that the net force. Ah, that's terrible. The sigma, the net force, which is a vector, is equal to change in momentum over change in time. OK. When can we use this equation? The net force equals change in momentum over change in time. Force and momentum are vectors. 
One piece that I've pointed out is that you use this equation when there is only one object, or when you're talking about the one object. For example, the net force acting on a single object, the change in momentum of a single object, and the change in time is a scalar, so it doesn't really matter which object. So one piece that I've talked about is we need to have one object. And I'll write that down. Sure. Talking about a single object. But it's important to realize that this equation is also true during all collisions and explosions. So my point here is that both of these equations are valid during all collisions and explosions. And what separates this one, conservation momentum, from net force equals change of momentum over change in time? This one was one object. What about this one, class? Two or more, Two. Two or more objects. Just to review, this guy right here has to do with the interaction of several objects, and there's always two or more objects physically in this equation. Whereas in this equation, there's only one object. And both those equations are true during all collisions and explosions. Now, please make sure whenever you use these equations that you expand them. For example, this one is the initial momentums of all the objects is equal to the final momentums of all the objects. We know momentum is mass times velocity. So we have the mass of one object times the velocity of the first object initial, plus the mass of the second object times the velocity of the second object initial is equal to the mass of the first object times the velocity of the first object final, plus the mass of the second object times the velocity of the second object final. I don't. I don't know how much you measure. Please. Got to expand this equation. In addition, you've got to expand this equation, the net force is equal to, again, change in momentum. So it's momentum final minus momentum initial, mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial, divided by change in time. And again, you could see more than one object, just a single object. Now, in conservation of momentum, in net force equals change in momentum over change in time, we still have an initial and a final. However, we don't have to identify your initial and final points. I want to know why. Why is that not something you have to do? Uh, look. Because they'll be identified by the problem. Uh, I need to know how. I agree with that, but I need specifics as to how it's identified in the problem. Remember, both of these equations are during collisions and explosions, all collisions and explosions. So when are the initial and final points then? Jacob? The beginning and the end of the collision and explosion. Right before the collision or explosion and right after the collision and explosion. So it's really a lot more clear in these two equations where the initial and final points rather than this one. So did I really write initial? And nobody pointed it out? No. I saw that. You did? I thought, yeah. it, was, I thought it was just a message. You thought initiation was perfect. That, that's a good. It's yeah. the initiation yeah, point. Down. Sorry, I got distracted. Is that what you wrote down? Great, thanks. OK, so <laughs> unlike conservation of mechanical energy and working with friction exchange of mechanical energy, where sometimes it's not clear where the initial and final points are, you really don't have to identify them for conservation momentum or net force equals change in momentum over change in time, because it's always at the beginning and the end of the collision or explosion. OK. Let's take a look at this equation a little bit more. We look at the net force equals change in momentum over change in time. And we rearranged this equation. We got the change in momentum is equal to the net force times the change in time. And this was the average net force. And we gave this a name. What, Maddie, is the name of this? Say again? Impulse. So this is impulse. So notice, impulse is equal to two different things. Impulse is equal to the change in momentum of the object. And it is also equal to the net force, the average net force on the object multiplied by change in time. So sometimes you'll be using this piece. It's equal to change in momentum. Sometimes you'll be using the fact that it's equal to the average net force times the change in time. Sometimes you'll be using both. Go on. Yeah. Um, so the 
Are we allowed, uh, when we're doing a problem, to jump straight to that equation, or do we have to prove it? No, you can just start with this equation. That's fine. I mean, because it's oh. right there. OK. Now, I do want to point out that a source of confusion for students is the difference between impulse and impact force. They are related. The impact force times the change in time is equal to the impulse, but they are not the same thing. They both start with I, which confuses you, so just be very careful of that. Impulse is the change in momentum, and it's also equal to the net force, uh, net average force times change in time, or the impact force times the change in time. One other piece about impulse has to do with a graph of force as a function of time for an event. What is impulse on a graph of force as a function of time? Tyler. Isn't it the area under the curve? The area under the curve. So the area under the curve equals the impulse. One more piece. Please look carefully at the board and identify which equations are boxed and which equation which you need that is not boxed. Who can tell me which equation is it that you need that is not boxed? Uh, Matt T. Impulse equals uh, change in momentum equals force average times change in time. Do you see why this isn't boxed? I mean, it's one step away from this, so there's really no reason for me to put it down again. But this is an equation that you need to be able to use, you need to know and understand, but I'm not going to give it to you because essentially we've already given it to you right here with this equation. So it's just something to be careful of. 